Hey Bucket Pond family, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to answer the question of what does a detritus worm live culture look like? You've seen uh, several of my previous uh, detritus worm projects with these tiny white worms. Uh, the Pond in a Jar series and the uh, Microfauna Aquarium series. I'll include links to those in the description. But, uh, you know, we can raise these tiny worms in very vast populations. Uh, they were very important to me because uh, these guys were one of the first species that we collected, uh, along with bladder snails. And that's way back before the channel even started. But these little worms, when they're raised in those dense populations like that, um, they eventually cause the project to crash. And uh, they cause a mass die-off. And then the jar usually becomes septic and becomes really nasty. Uh, but I want to show you that I have found a better way to culture these detritus worms in a stable aquarium. So here it is. It looks pretty basic. It's a little cloudy, just a little tiny bit cloudy. And uh, you can tell there's not many plants in here. That's important. Uh, not every jar needs to have a ton of plants to be really cool. Um, you'd be surprised what you can do with just a, a minimal setup. And uh, this is about a half gallon. Uh, some of the jars I've been using lately are just too small. You know, a bigger jar means that you can have uh, more stability. Snow, uh, smaller nano aquariums are much more volatile. When something happens, that little tank can crash very easily. So you want to go bigger when you can in my experience. Uh, but yeah, we have a few stems of dayflower in here, and we have a few pieces of Wedelia or alligator weed. I know it sounds weird to get those two mixed up, but they look very similar uh, when grown in an aquarium like this. But this project has been running for about six months, six to eight months, I believe, uh, off camera. I don't show you guys everything, though I'm trying to work on that. And uh, yeah, I like this jar a lot. That little cup thing inside there, that might look like a reflection, but that's actually a little collection cup. Uh, a little like a sample container that I happen to leave in this jar. It's not hurting anything. And it's just increasing the surface area inside for bacteria to grow. Let's get our macro lens and take a better look. All right, Bucket Pond family. So right here, we're looking with the macro lens at the surface of the water. You can see some very large uh, duckweed there. And uh, keep in mind, this is highly magnified. So that is very, very tiny duckweed. That's lemna minor and water meal just below it there. Uh, but we're looking at our ostracods. They may be a bit out of focus around the edges. That's just a defect in our lens. But those little dots there, those guys are ostracods. They are essentially little tiny shrimp. And uh, they have a, like a clam shell. And they're very small. Some of them in the oceans, they get quite large, but these freshwater guys, they don't get very big. And uh, in my experience, running a community culture is a much better option uh, compared to a monoculture of just trying to raise one creature or one species in a jar, you know. And uh, so raising those ostracods with our copepods and some of our detritus worms here has resulted in a very stable situation. Now, these worms are very, very small. You'll even see a few ostracods here that you can compare uh, the size of our detritus worms. Uh, some of them are, in fact, crawling on the, on the glass, <laughs> on the grass. But uh, most of them are swimming in the water column. Our detritus worms are free swimming. And, you know, I, I wish I had more information on them. Uh, they are doing well in this jar, though. That's the point of this video. But uh, I wish I had more information, a actual species name, um, maybe some more info about how they move. I think they act a bit like a, uh, a tiny multicellular animal. I'm not very sure. You know, I'm not a scientist. But uh, these are the little detritus worms that we love so much. And we are going to have to feed this jar and boost their numbers a bit because I want to include them in the black cow experimental aquarium. Uh, in the past, I have used these tiny worms to attack uh, fungus and mold, and uh, they're very effective. They also eat cucumber slices, and uh, yeah, uh, we also have just a couple bladder snails in here. I don't really feed this jar regularly. I mostly just leave it <laughs> in a somewhat dark 
place on my shelf. It doesn't get much light. It doesn't get much food. And uh, it's a very stable aquarium, just running as it is. Now, I do occasionally throw in a little fish flakes or a piece of cucumber in here, but not as often as the other jars. Uh, but yeah, that's my goal. I want to boost up the numbers of our worms in this project and then use them. I want to inject them into a few of the other experiments in the other jar aquariums because I love them so much and uh, I like to investigate their possible uses. Uh, you may notice a little bit of a uh, uh, lighting or a, like a color issue on the video here. And uh, that's just because I have been struggling with the uh, exposure levels and uh, auto-correcting uh, different light. It's, it's a big thing. But uh, we're going to feed the tank today with a piece of cucumber. This is a giant cucumber. Not one of mine. I didn't grow this, unfortunately. Uh, I bought this from the store, from the grocery store. And uh, remember, you have to skin it because, you know, store-bought cucumbers are typically covered in wax and uh, pesticide and Roundup and all that good stuff that we humans love to chew on. So we cut the skin off. And um, yeah, I should also mention that your snails and worms, they cannot eat the skin of the cucumber. So it's, it's just going to hang around in there if you leave it on. But uh, yeah, so we're going to slice up our cucumber and get it in there. I would like to get it a bit lower into the jar. If you remember the microfauna aquarium or the pond in a jar, uh, series that we did in the past. Um, having Nutella macroalgae made it much easier to pin our cucumber slice in the bottom uh, because the Nutella just grows everywhere, you know. We could just tangle it up in there and it was perfect. Um, here in a minimally, minimally planted jar, um, I don't have much to, you know, wedge it down it with. I am trying to find a way to to tie it to a piece of marble or, or something like that. You know, there has to be a way for me to sink these uh, cucumber slices, and we're looking into that. But, uh, yeah, it's caught on a stem from one of the Wedelia plants. It should be fine. I should probably show the surface of this jar a bit, uh, but really all that's up there are a few little leaves uh, from a few stems that I just added, so I don't consider that too relevant to this video. If you're curious, you can see quite a few stems and branches from my other jars behind this one. Some of our ecospheres here and there. I need to get back to building ecospheres. Um, I have quite a bit that I need to do, honestly. But, uh, you know, with uh, with bucket ponds and great ideas take time. Here we have one or two of our other jar aquariums. We're going to uh, boost the population of our detritus worms and add them to these other projects. That's the goal. Uh, I, I just love these little worms, and I like starting new live cultures. Plus, I think that we can use them in our uh, our search for a better method. You know, I want to find just a way to make cool jar aquariums. I want to start the bucket ponds method. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, like, different ideas. Maybe you make a, uh, like a, a certain ratio, a small amount of this, a little bit of sand on top. Uh, you know, you mix in some other items. And then, bam, you have a perfect bladder snail jar aquarium. You know, uh, add this species of worm or, you know, some creature that would fill this particular niche in the jar. Things like that. That's what I think about a lot. Uh, I think that we can kind of find the right mixture of plants, animals, substrate, and hardscape and uh, bacteria, I would assume, uh, to create, you know, really cool things. That's my ultimate goal. We're going to feed a few of our other jars with a slice of cucumber as well, uh, but we never open the sealed uh, ecospheres there. Some of these latch, uh, latch lid jars in the background, I do open them and throw you know food in there. But uh, yeah, I don't ever want to open our sealed ecosystems. A lot of people online, uh, they will open that stuff and check it out and play with it and add and subtract things that will. Um, I think that's kind of like kind of lame you know you kind of avoid the project doing that i like to just leave them sealed and then some of them i leave open of course um our live cultures were raising creatures to eventually include them in our uh, other projects you know those are always open uh but that's us guys that's bucket ponds uh we're raising more of our tiny white detritus worms uh we're spreading them around and uh please look forward to seeing them added to the black cow aquarium which needs to it needs a little maintenance. I'm not going to lie. We just made a video about it and I got to go back and make another one. 
So thanks for watching. Please check out my channel. Please like, subscribe, and let me know what you think. I love your comments. Thank you.